Welcome to Apple Ford News. This just in. Ford Motor Company releases a plan to stimulate our local economy. Reporting live, here's Eddie Salido. I'm standing here with Daryl Huffton. Daryl, does Ford have a solution to the credit crunch? They do, Eddie. Ford has authorized Apple Ford of Lynchburg to lend $5 million. $5 million? It can't be done. Here's the crazy part, Eddie. A lot of those loans are going to go out at 0%. Wow. I'm Nancy Hofton, and I approve this message. The Green Valley Book Fair is open tonight till 7 and every night through October 26. Come on up and see us. You're going to love our selection this time at the Green Valley Book Fair. Whether you're looking for cookbooks, children's books, gardening, history, antiques, price guides, we have gun digest titles, and we also have posters and matted art at just $3 each. There's so much to find at the Green Valley Book Fair. From Roanoke and Lynchburg, take Interstate 81 North to exit 240, turn east, and follow the signs to the Green Valley Book Fair. Don't wait any longer. Operators are standing by to take your information and get you approved to buy a vehicle today. No one is turned down. Call Credit Dynamics at 434-528-8055 and get a new vehicle today. The Weather Experts, only on ABC 13. Tonight on Nightline, last dance. Barack Obama and John McCain square off in the third and final presidential debate. We're live with the verdict at the end of a critical night on the road to the White House. Money talks as the market takes another nosedive. The two candidates rip into each other's plans for rescuing the nation's sinking economy. And now or never. So can John McCain get back into this race? George Stephanopoulos is here with the Nightline report card to tell us who won and who lost. From the global resources of ABC News with Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in New York City and Terry Moran at the presidential debate in Hempstead, New York, this is Nightline, October 15, 2008. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. They saved the best for last. The third and final presidential debate of the 2008 campaign was, in many ways, what the country's been looking for, a tough, tense, at times freewheeling exchange that revealed a lot about each of these candidates. John McCain, he came in needing a game changer, and he'd been urged by supporters to really go after Barack Obama, and he surely did that. This was a feisty, relentlessly attacking John McCain tonight. But Barack Obama does not rattle easily, and he kept his cool out there, pressing his own attacks. All in all, this was a heavyweight bout that went the distance. When we welcome Barack Obama and John McCain. The last debate, and without a doubt, John McCain's last big chance to turn around a race that polls show is steadily slipping away from him. Let's get to it. The pressure was on. The staggering economy dominated at the start. McCain arguing for his $300 billion mortgage assistance package. So we've got to reverse this. We ought to put the homeowners first. And I am disappointed that Secretary Paulson and others have not made that their first priority. And then he hit Obama on taxes, recalling a moment from an Obama rally where a voter, Joe Wurzelbacher, challenged the Democrat on his tax plan. Well, the reason why I ask you about the American dream, right. I mean, I've worked hard. I'm a plumber. And what you want to do to Joe the plumber and millions more like him is have their taxes increased and not be able to realize the American dream is of owning their own business. It's That's what, what Joe want. believes. <laughs> the, he's been watching some ads of uh, Senator McCain's. Let me tell you what I'm actually going to do. Um, I think tax policy is a major difference between Senator McCain and myself. Uh, and we both want to cut taxes. The difference is who we want to cut taxes for. But McCain clearly came spoiling for a fight and used a classic Republican argument against Democrats. You know what Senator Obama ended up his conversation with Joe the plumber? We need to spread the wealth around. In other words, we're going to take Joe's money, give it to Senator Obama, and let him spread the wealth around. I want Joe the plumber to spread that wealth around. Nobody likes taxes. I would prefer that None of us had to pay taxes, including myself. But ultimately, we've got to pay for the core investments that make this economy strong. And if somebody's nobody got likes to do it. taxes, let's not raise anybody's taxes. Well, I don't okay. mind paying a little more. Once again tonight, Barack Obama used the tactic that has proved so effective in this campaign: tie John McCain to George W. Bush. 
pursuing the same kinds of policies that we pursued over the last eight years is not going to bring down the deficit. Good. And frankly, Senator McCain voted for four out of five of President Bush's budgets. But tonight, McCain was determined to take it to Obama, and he was ready for him. Senator Obama, I am not President Bush. If you wanted to run against President Bush, you should have run four years ago. And then moderator Bob Schieffer turned to the tone of the campaign and challenged the candidates. Are each of you tonight willing to sit at this table and say to each other's face what your campaigns and the people uh, in your campaigns have said about each other? And the, Senator McCain, you're first. Fact is, it's gotten pretty tough. And I regret some of the negative aspects of both campaigns. But the fact is, that it has taken many turns, which I think are unacceptable. One of them happened just the other day when a man I admire and respect, I've written about him, Congressman John Lewis, an American hero, made allegations that Sarah Palin and I were somehow associated with the worst chapter in American history. Segregation, deaths of children in church bombings, George Wallace. If we want to talk about uh, Congressman Lewis, uh who is an American hero, uh, he unprompted by my campaign, without my campaign's awareness, uh, made a statement that he was troubled with what he was hearing at some of uh, the rallies that your running mate uh, was uh, holding, in which the, all the public reports indicated were shouting, when my name came up, things like terrorist, and kill him. McCain kept hammering away bringing up Obama's association with 1960s radical William Ayers. Uh, Mr. Ayers, I don't care about an old washed up terrorist, but as Senator Clinton said in her debates with you, we need to know the full extent of that relationship. Bill Ayers is a professor of education uh, in Chicago. Forty years ago, when I was eight years old, he engaged in despicable acts with a radical domestic group. Uh, I have roundly condemned those acts. I think the fact that this has become such an important part of your campaign, Senator McCain, says more about your campaign than it says about me. And then the Why Sarah the Palin question. What if your vice your presidential pick had to become well, president? Uh, Obama praised Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. And with polls the, showing uh, voters uh, deeply uh, skeptical of Palin, no McCain Palin. faced a difficult they moment. Know that she's a role model. She's a reformer through and through. And it's time we had that breath of, fresh air, breath of fresh air coming into our nation's capital. And that she has ignited our party and people all over America. Obama declined to answer the direct question. Do you think she's qualified to be president? You know, I think it's, that's going to be up to the uh, uh, American people. I think that uh, obviously she's a uh, capable uh, politician who uh, has, I think, excited uh, the, uh, a base in, in the Republican Party. The split-screen view in this debate showed the tension between the two men. McCain rolling his eyes at one point. He seemed on edge at times as he waited to respond. Obama laughed and smiled. He seemed to want to show McCain couldn't get under his skin. McCain, as he promised he would be, was on the attack all night on health care. This really gets down to the fundamental difference in our philosophies. If you notice that in all of his proposals, Senator Government wants, uh, Senator Obama wants government to do the job. Senator Obama wants government to the, do the job. I want, Joe, you to do the job. I want to leave money in your pocket. On abortion, campaign. McCain this blasted Obama for not supporting a bill in the Illinois so State Senate Senator outlawing late-term or so-called partial birth president. abortion. I don't know how you vote present on some of that. I don't know how you align yourself with the extreme uh, aspect of the pro-abortion movement in America. If it sounds incredible that I would uh, vote to withhold life-saving treatment from an infant, uh, that's because it's not true. We should try to prevent unintended pregnancies uh, by providing appropriate education to our youth, communicating that sexuality is sacred and that they should not be engaged in, in uh, cavalier activity. As the debate drew to a close, both men took their final opportunity to speak to millions of Americans directly and summed up their campaigns. I've spent my entire life in the service of this nation and putting my country first. There's a long line of McCain's that has served our country for a long time in war and in peace. It's been the great honor of my life, and I've been proud to serve. 
and I hope you'll give me an opportunity to serve again. The biggest risk we could take right now is to adopt the same failed policies and the same failed politics that we've seen over the last eight years and somehow expect a different result. Uh, we need fundamental change in this country, and that's what I'd like to bring. And that's it. It was a real scrap out there. When we come back, who won this thing? George Stephanopoulos joined us with tonight's verdict in the Nightline Report Card. All around the world, men with erectile dysfunction have taken 36 hours Cialis. Today, men can also be ready with another dosing option, Cialis for daily use, a clinically proven low-dose tablet you take every day. So you can be ready anytime the moment is right. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. 36 hours Cialis or Cialis for daily use. Ask your doctor if a Cialis option is right for you. So when the moment is right, you can be ready. The generation that swore it would never get old didn't. Welcome to the summer of life. New touch of gray from Just For Men. Let you keep a little gray. Works gradually. Easy. New touch of gray. Critics are calling W incredible, riveting, oh! and downright funny. I'm a designer. You must be joking. Four stars. Fabulous. The stuff Oscar nominations are made of. All right, way to go. W rated PG-13 in theaters everywhere Friday. Comedian David Allen Greer on an all-new Jimmy coming up on ABC. ABC Thursday. Being roommates is one thing. Love the outfit. But in the hospital, it's every doctor for themselves. Using me as a doormat ends now. ABC's Grey's Anatomy. All new Thursday at 9, 8 central on ABC. Met Tom Perriello yet? A New York lawyer who's moved back to Virginia to run for Congress. But his liberal policies are still from New York. Perriello opposes the offshore and Alaskan drilling we need to lower gas prices. Opposes the Marriage Protection Amendment, which protects traditional marriage. And Perriello supports the so-called comprehensive immigration reform. We know what that means. Amnesty and open borders for illegal immigrants. Tom Perriello, wrong for Virginia. I'm Virgil Good, and I approve this ad. So this third and final presidential debate is in the books. So who came out on top? Our chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos, joins us once again for the Nightline Report Card. All right, George, this was a, a scrap, a real good one. Let's start with the, the main issue here, strategy. What's the grade there? Both candidates did well. A for Barack Obama, A for John McCain. This was John McCain's uh, best debate. He was pressing the issues, as you said. He was putting uh, Barack Obama on the defensive, especially on the issue of taxes. Right at the beginning, had a clear break from President Bush when he said, if you wanted to go Obama, if you want to run against President Bush, you should have done that four years ago. But probably the most interesting move he made was when he introduced this new character, Joe Wurzelbacher the plumber, into the debate. Of course I've talked to people like Joe the plumber. Now my old buddy Joe, Joe the plumber's out there. I want Joe, you to do the job. Hey Joe, you're rich, congratulations. Joe Wurzelbacher is not only rich, he's also famous now, and he's going to basically become uh, John McCain's chief surrogate uh, out on the campaign trail in these final uh, couple of weeks. But look, Barack Obama handled this all very, very well. He was cool under attack. He explained uh, away uh, every attack, responded well. And again, on the issues where he has, I think, a big advantage over John McCain right now, on the economy overall, on health care, on education. He did especially well explaining his positions and connecting, I think, with voters back home. So A's on strategy. This was a different format tonight. The two men sitting inches away from each other, trading those accusations. Style. What are the grades on style? 
A for Barack Obama, A minus for John McCain. And I think that's because uh, Barack Obama won the battle of the split screens uh, tonight. You look at those reaction shots for John McCain, the rolling of the eyes. He seemed exasperated uh, by Barack Obama. He seemed on the edge of anger, sometimes a little bit over the top. Obama, on the other hand, remaining cool again, under pressure, smiling under the attacks. That's the uh, demeanor he's had through these debates. I think it served him very well. Tonight, I also think that uh, McCain made a key mistake about halfway through the debate uh, when they were talking about the tone of the campaign. Obama says, let's get back to the issues that matter to people back home. And then, unprompted, McCain brings up the issue of the former member of the Weather Underground, Bill Ayers. Mr. Ayers, I don't care about an old washed-up terrorist, but as Senator Clinton said in her debates with you, we need to know the full extent of that relationship. There were dial groups done by many organizations having undecided voters watching the debate. When John McCain did that, brought up Bill Ayers on his own, they went south very, very quickly. That Bill Ayers attack just hasn't seemed to work for him at all. And finally, accuracy. What are the grades? Uh, two Bs. B for Barack Obama, B for John McCain. Uh, for McCain, I, I think he misstated. Barack Obama's position on health care when he said people like Joe Wurzelbacher would be fine, small businesses would be fine. He also misstated how extensive uh, the McCain, uh, the Obama tax cuts uh, would be, how many small businesses would be affected by the tax increases. Excuse me. Barack Obama wrong when he said that all of uh, John McCain's ads have been negative. Also wrong when he underplayed his connections to the community organizing voter registration group, ACORN, uh, both within the bounds uh, of normal behavior for, for politicians, but not A's. All right, so bottom line, who won the third and final debate here, George? Clean sweep for Barack Obama. He has won every debate. He won tonight by staying cool under pressure. He won tonight by parrying the attacks of John McCain. The only thing that John McCain could have really done tonight to change the tenor of this campaign was to get under Obama's skin to force him into an error that did not happen tonight. Another win for Barack Obama. Now, you've called, you're going to get in some heat for this, George. You called all three presidential debates and the vice presidential debate for Obama Biden. Does that mean this thing is over? Uh, I don't know if it's over. It's uh, right now. Barack Obama would win, I think, more than 300 electoral votes uh, if the election were held today. He's well ahead uh, right now. There are about two and a half weeks left. We'll see what happens uh, in those final two and a half weeks. Y you know, if you look back at these debates, though, I think you will see, and this is a judgment uh, that's pretty much been confirmed by every poll, uh, both on the uh, debate nights, but also in subsequent uh, polling. People have come away from these debates, voters, both undecided and Democrats, have come away from these debates saying they are more reassured uh, by Barack Obama. I think he may look back and say this is where he sealed the deal, but of course we still have two and a half weeks left. George Stephanopoulos grading the debates for us throughout, calling them for the Democrats. Thanks very much for that, George. And you can offer your own marks on tonight's debate by clicking on the Nightline page at abcnews.com. Now, when we come back, we've got a special guest we're going to be joined by Joe the Plumber himself. Where does it hurt? My aching back. Introduce yourself to Thermacare Heat Wraps. Real penetrating heat, clinically proven to deliver targeted pain relief that soothes and relaxes tight muscles all day. Great idea. Try Thermacare Heat Wraps and wear it where it hurts. This is a central multivitamin, complete from A to zinc. This is CoraWise, a natural ingredient that can lower cholesterol. Put them together, and you get Centrum Cardio, the first and only complete multivitamin that can lower cholesterol. Centrum Cardio. So I'm not worried about CEOs. I'm not worried about corporate lobbyists. I'm worried about the couple that's trying to figure out how they're going to retire. I'm worried about the family that's trying to figure out how they can save for their child's college education. I'm worried about the guy who's worked in a plant for 20 years and suddenly sees his job shipped overseas and has lost not just his job, but his health care, his pension, and the sense of dignity that comes with having a good job. That's who I'm worried about. And that's who I'm going to be fighting for and thinking about every single day that I'm in the White House. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Life on Mars is Thursday's new smash hit, being hailed as first rate with four stars, Jason O'Mara, Lisa Bonet, and Harvey Keitel stars. In ABC's Life on Mars, all new this Thursday, 10, 9 central on ABC. Bergman Toyota is matching the factory rebate on new Toyota. If Toyota gives you 5,000 off, 
we'll make it 10 or get 0% financing on 11 new Toyota models at Berglund Toyota right here in Lynchburg. What's it going to take with these guys? Make their morning with breakfast from McDonald's. It's just too easy. Because nothing satisfies like a McDonald's breakfast platter. Fluffy hotcakes, scrambled eggs, and savory sausage hot off the griddle. It's everything you crave for breakfast. It's tomorrow. Obama rewards his friends with your tax dollars. Tony Resco, 14 million. Allison Davis, 20 million. Kenny Smith, 100,000. That's unethical. Congressional liberals promise to raise your taxes to reward their friends with wasteful pork. Taxes for you, pork for them. Who's going to stop them? Congressional liberals or him? I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. Why hasn't someone outlawed the shrug? Aren't most answers attainable with a little elbow grease? Doesn't anyone care? At U.S. Cellular, we believe in living in a shrug-free world. U.S. Cellular, believe in something better. Berkman Toyota is matching the factory rebate on new Toyotas. Your 500 becomes 1,000, your 4,000 becomes 8, your 5,000 becomes 10, or get 0% financing on 11 Toyota models at Berglund Toyota, right here in Lynchburg. Nightline continues from the presidential debate in Hempstead, New York, with Terry Moran. So, Joe, how does it feel now to be the most famous plumber in America? It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite the treat. Quite. Now, let, let me ask you, were you aware in advance that Senator McCain was going to bring you up, bring up your exchange with Senator Obama in the debate tonight? No, I mean, I heard some scuttlebutt about it, just people talking, but, uh, I mean, to actually be told that that was going to be uh, a focus point that uh, Barack Obama and Senator McCain could uh, 